All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Open Live Q and A. My name is Mr. McLogan, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. Sorry, I was kind of looking into that. I, I realized that my um, thing got all smushed on there. Why are you so small? And now I can't go ahead and climb it. But if you guys do have questions, there you go, much bigger. Uh, I do go ahead and take math questions each and every Sunday night at 9 p.m. So feel free to go ahead and um, add them at brianmclogan.com forward slash Q&A. But yes, I uh, did want to kind of like change it up a little bit uh, this uh, this evening. And uh, yeah, kind of let you guys, um, you know, kind of go through, see if you guys could kind of guess what is my one um, lie from the three truths that are in there. So if you go ahead and take a look at the description, if you go ahead and take a look at the chat, I believe that's what I pinned. I didn't pin the, my math questions there. Um, yeah, I did. So go ahead and take a look. And if you have, uh, if you have a good guess, then go ahead and type it down in the chat. I thought it'd be something kind of interesting to see who would, um, see what any students might be kind of following along and might be able to kind of guess from on there. But VX first, good to have you on. Thank you much. Uh, my day's been going pretty good. It's, uh, I had a lot of travel from the, from this last week and, but, uh, but yeah, I'm very excited to get along with, um, a, another live stream and get going with another week. And James said, I did not learn everything I needed in my high school class. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, I mean, I don't think you're ever going to learn everything that you need to know. Right. Um, you know, I think it'd be kind of difficult from there. Oh, you're probably responding back to somebody else, which I see that you posted in there, but, um, the mm, master in the differential equations, learn trick on MEC, yeah, for Calc two. Yes. Oh, I see your original question, which was get a BS, um, my bachelor's math one day. You have a super good job. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if, um, it, I, regardless of like the math, like of getting a job, I think it's just a good foundation, right? Even if you had a bachelor's of arts or bachelor's of science, whatever, um, I think that is a, just a good foundation, you know, for life. So I definitely totally agree with you, um, on that. All right. Um, Mika says one or four. Let me know down in the chat. I'm kind of checking in for them to see if you guys can have the questions. I'll get into that uh, very, very shortly. And I mean, yeah, I mean, you can learn, you can understand the general concept of calculus without trigonometry, of course, but I, I you're going to be very, very limited with, um, with how, how well you're going to conceptually be able to understand um, a lot of the, you know, um, concepts and applications. So yeah, of course you can understand calculus without trig, but, uh, but yeah, it's going to be just limited, right? It's like, can you understand math without multiplication? Of course, like multiplication and division, of course. Right. But like, there's only so much math you're going to be able to learn within those constraints. Right. So, you know, trigonometry is just another branch of mathematics. And, um, so being able to apply calculus understanding with trigonometry is, um, is just opening so many more doors for your understanding as well as the applications. Um, and howdy, Nick, for one there. All right. Uh, how is he the worst? Yeah, I can only imagine. Ben Modiano says number three. Uh, I'm in still community college. Lucky I don't like to be working. That's very good. Oh, no. Why did I... Hmm. Let me double check. Bit rate. Sorry, I must have kept on hitting that um, back from there. So um, anyways, after all, now I got to go back into what I was saying because I know I hit that. Um, so the, um, so anyways, what I wanted to mention was the Discord server. If you guys are interested in joining um, that, it's just a great place for you guys to be able to answer questions, you know, kind of communicate with other students or just like yourself, um, being able to help other students as well as get questions answered because I only go live each and every Sunday night at 9 p.m. But again, if you do have questions um, on your math, then feel free to go there. I will be taking some questions or approaching them because I think last week 
I was like so exhausted I couldn't go through anything. So um, I do apologize for that. But anyways, let's go through the three truths and lie, which actually, you know what? I didn't put as an overlay. I think that'd be kind of like a good idea. Let's, um, and now that I'm just thinking about that, let me actually go ahead and create my, that tr three truths and a lie overlay. So I'm just going to go through the, it's in the description. And again, there's four things that I want you guys to be able to do. Okay. So copy, let me see if I can get this good. See how this is going to look. Okay, cool. So, all right. So again, I want to see, cause I have not seen a lot. So again, please pull, go ahead and put in the chat. You can just do one, two, three, or four. Um, what you guys think is going to be where is, yeah, there we go. What you guys think is the chat here. All right, let me go and see if I can get that back in. All right, perfect. There we go. All right, I have not seen enough questions, but let me get that chat. Let me get your questions uh, in from there. I'm going to leave that up there. I want to see a little bit more. I want to see some people like saying, no, I think I know exactly what it does, but which out of these... Which out of those statements do you guys think is the lie? It's a really good one. It's an interesting one. A lot, some of them I talk about a lot. Some of them, if you've been on some streams, I've mentioned here or there. Um, and then, and yeah, I could actually play this game like a couple of times. I got some pretty, I got some pretty interesting ones. Um, uh, I've got some interesting ones from on there. Da, 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 da. So we got some. So 2K challenge said, my guess is one. Adrian says three. My guess is one. Alexis, yo, hola, mi amigo. Good. Well, what do you think? Which one do you think? And actually, while you guys are adding that on, I'm going to go ahead and take a look real quick because I just want to see some couple other questions go from there. And then I just want to go ahead and see if I can get to my chat. CC goes with the one. James, you got a three. <laughs> number four <laughs> kind of going back and changing it i like it <laughs> um let's see i only got four more questions so yeah I, I didn't go through all of the math questions i usually like to go through the math questions from on there for you guys uh, bms says number four and interesting 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 Ah, oh, what question you want me to do i don't understand where to begin that's a lot of math why do you guys always send me word problems? I am not going to be able to do the word problems. I get those, those, but that's a long one to be able to do. All right. Um, yeah, more word problems. No, we don't have time for that. Sorry. No, I think that's what you want. Maybe not. Maybe we're not. Okay. So you guys ready? You guys ready? Get it in? So, all right, let's go. Uh, well, let's get into it. So I'm just actually going to go... One by one, and I will delete one uh, for on this. And Ryan, I got 90 on my advanced pre-calculus. Well, awesome, Ryan. Congratulations. All right. So let's knock out the first one. And actually, what I'm going to do is let me actually cancel that out. Um, let me do, yeah, I'll actually, let me go through this. Let me actually edit it. There you go. Okay. So the first truth that is absolutely a truth, which I have talked about a couple of times for some of you might know, but actually um, is kind of an interesting one is actually my mom was a math teacher. So a lot of times I don't really like to bring that one up. And I think the reason why is like, I think a lot of students when they see like, oh, your mom was a math teacher, like um, it had to be, you know, so easy for you, right? You know, it's like you could always just, uh, you know, get help whenever you wanted help. And yes, that probably was a very important, like that was very helpful if you were to be one to take advantage of it. But I think also if you've read my story, like if you like listen to, you know, my story in my upper, I mean, like I kind of like rejected math. I was not like involved or cared about math um, to be able to get help. Right. And I think actually the fact that my mom was a math teacher at is actually part of like part of a little bit of the reason why I didn't like math, you know, like I kind of just, as I mentioned, like went the other way, right? I didn't care about math. Like I didn't want to do math. And I mean, thankfully, you know, my mom didn't really push math too much on me. She kind of let me figure things out on my own, um, which rightfully so, you know, because like, especially for someone that, you know, would be like good at math, right? As you think of like a parent and math teacher, like to see your students or your child like struggling, I think could be, you know, sometimes kind of difficult, right? And kind of saying, well, how... 
you know, should I let them struggle? Should I, you know, really try to like insert myself and make sure that they're going to be successful in life? Um, and yeah, you know, as I mentioned, like in high school, I struggled, um, with math, but, um, but thankfully the, um, but yeah, you know, thankfully I think just kind of going through my struggles on my own, I developed the, you know, kind of my own love for math. And that's where I decided to, you know, obviously continue to pursue it. All right. The next one is, ha, ha, ha. the next one's kind of an easy one, but well, I don't want to say a really kind of easy one, but I think one that, um, I think students actually go through a lot is, um, I don't know. I failed a math class before I have a minor in political science. I drove a 2000 set of two Camry. What's the one that a lot of people have kept on saying? Um, you know, what? I think a lot of people have gone with number four. And guess what? Number four is absolutely true. <laughs> so number four um, is, yeah, I still drive a 2007 Toyota Camry. That is uh, that is my car. I've had that since 2012. Has uh, over 220,000 miles on it. And I love that car. So it's a stick shift, which I don't think you can get a 2007. I don't think like, I think that was the last year that the Toyota Camry made stick shift cars. And, uh, and yeah, like, I mean, now that I don't, you know, drive to school every day, um, I really just have to drive to the gym. I have to drive to like pick up my kids, I have to drive to like, you know, local stores. So, um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, that's only happened within the last year, but yeah, I mean, the car has tons of miles on it. It, it is a beater car, but, um, uh, but yeah, you know, I've just never, I've never been one that's really cared so much about cars or wanted to like gratefully improve, um, like driving in like a really, really nice car. And obviously I can't like afford a really, really nice car anyways. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's, I've, I always just kind of enjoyed the car and I like it. And you know, it's like, if it's not broken, like why fix it? So that kind of brings us down to number two, number three. So I failed the math class before and I have a minor in political science now. So I kind of got you guys on a good one because I've talked about failing, struggling in math. I've talked about, um, I've talked about struggling in math. I've talked about failing classes before. However, I do got to let you know, the only class that I have ever actually failed, and actually I never failed. Actually, yeah, the one class I only did fail was physics. And I basically kind of gave up midway, but I actually never failed a math class. So actually the only, um, the actually never failed a math class. And guess what? I actually do have a political, I actually, my minor is actually in political science. So it's kind of weird the way that that came about because when I first started, and if I think some of like, I've talked about this on my live streams before, and obviously if you're not going to watch all my live streams, there's way too many of them. But the, uh, when I became a math major, I, I wanted to, I figured I was like, Oh, become a math major. Like, let me go and do physics. Right. And cause I'm like, it just makes sense. It's math and math. Right. And let's do physics having really no experience or understanding of what entails to be a, you know, of taking like multiple physics classes. And, uh, and yeah, that first, that first year I was taking like Calc 2 and physics and it was like way too much work for me, way too hard. And, and then that was where I was like, all right, uh, you know, I either got to do math or I got to do physics. And obviously I enjoyed math. I did not enjoy physics. So that's when I decided, I was like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to drop, <laughs> I'm going to drop physics. And that was the class that I failed. That was like, I just can't finish this class. I came back to it. I actually had to, I think I passed the lab, so but I had to go back and like retake the class. And yeah, it just it was a bad experience. But I ended up, I think I got a B when I retook the class. Obviously, I was in like different classes. I was able to like focus more. Um, and obviously I had a better understanding of math at that time as well. But then I was like, all right, well, all right, physics is way too hard. So let's do, you know, communication. I figure like everybody's like, oh, communications is easy. And I actually really like, I kind of enjoyed communications. Like I remember doing, like I did a speech class and I really enjoyed that. But then like, that was really kind of it. There was really nothing else I really enjoyed about communications. Um, and then also like writing papers or anything like that was just extremely difficult for me. And, uh, and I just decided, you know, I'm like, even this, this might be an easy one. I don't really want to have a communications minor. Like this is not going to be fun. So then I was like, all right, um, let's go ahead and find something else. Now there was another topic that I still am very, very interested in, but I didn't complete it. And that was, uh, psychology. So I decided to go in to be a psychology minor because I was like, oh, psychology kind of sounds cool. Like I had to take some of those for my educational classes and the, um, Oh, I, oh, I forgot to save that. Sorry, guys. And actually, oh, let me save that one more time. Sorry, I got to get those all done. 
Hmm. Actually, you know what? Let me actually do it this way. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, because I could actually, yeah, I probably could, whatever. You know, um, why did I do that? Let me actually go back to my education. Um, well, anyways, where are you? There you are. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Interesting. Sorry, I was just changing things up. I was actually going to go through, no, I don't want that. There you go. I was going to post them all up there again. All right. Um, for those of you that maybe just be hopping on like later into the live stream. So anyways, the, so I decided I was like, oh, it'll be psychology. Cause I took psychology classes when I was an education minor and I like psychology. And actually I really do. I think if there was probably anything else that I'd like study further besides mathematics, it'd be psychology. Um, or maybe business, you know, like I really do feel like there's so much more to kind of learn that is beneficial and like, you know, in your real life with those two topics. But, uh, but the problem I had with psychology, it just kind of seemed like too formal. It's like so much theory, so much like reading. I was like, ah, I just don't really like this. And so then I ended up taking a class. It was called like small government. I'll never forget it. It was my absolute favorite class I've ever taken in my life. I have no idea why it was literally just a, um, it was just like, um, what do you call it? An elective class. And I just like fell in love with it. And I was like, all right. And then after taking the class, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a political, I'm going to be a minor in political science. And then I just started learning, you know, taking like political science, like learning the history and learning about, you know, um, politics in different countries. And I was just like, I don't know, thrown back. Like, I think just because everything was so math and was like so rigid and like, so, um, so different than what I was learning in political science that I just kind of like grew like good attachment, you know, to it. And, uh, and yeah, so that is actually my, uh, that is actually the truth as well. So I do have a minor in uh, political science. And the one uh, lie is actually I failed a math class because I've never failed a math class. I failed many tests. I failed quizzes, right? I uh, got Ds, got Cs, but uh, but I actually never failed. The only class that I ever failed was in my physics class. Uh, any advice for an eighth grader in honors geometry? Um, yeah, I mean, do the work, ask questions, right? I mean, same thing. I Actually, I'm going to have a video I'm going to post on Tuesday that's going to be basically for everybody that always asks me that question. Like, what's your advice? Like, do the homework, ask questions, um, get help, right, when you need to, and everything from there. Uh, unfortunately, I do not teach school. So I, I basically just kind of make videos now. Um, that's kind of like my main, main gig. And... Um, the oh i just noticed uh your username good for you um uh, <laughs> but uh but no i so i just uh i don't teach um from the classroom anymore from in that regard um you know i don't have a good math joke. i need i should probably come up with some good math jokes shouldn't i that's a good good call i'll maybe think about coming up with some better math jokes for my year um, I says I math test tomorrow and I have, and I've watched like 10 of your videos today to help me understand everything. Well, awesome. So happy to help you out. Best of luck. All right, let's go ahead and get to some of these questions. All right, so I do have some math questions that if you guys have not, um, asked, then feel free to go to brianmcclug.com forward slash Q and A. And let's go ahead and get into it. So, um, actually let me go and post that back up. All right. So we got that. Wait. Yeah, that's still going to show me up, I believe. Voila. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. And cool. All right. Let me go and see if there's any other questions. <sighs> um, these are going to be the math questions that you guys submitted. Mm, that's not going to work. And I apologize. I wanted to kind of get through some of these, but like I said, I was going back traveling and some of these questions I'm just not going to be able to get to from on here. All right. I don't understand. Oh yeah. Same I, word problems guys do just do not work out very well. Okay. Yeah. I don't, that's just going to be too much. Time. So let's go ahead and get through. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry about that. Come on. 
All right. That was last week's. Cool. Um, no, I have not been, um, what is it, influenced? No, I have not been influenced to change a grade. Um, we've had a, like the conversation, like not to directly change the grade, but, um, no, I've never had that issue for it before, but I've definitely had it from like parents and everything else, like not really to do it, but, but yeah, no, no nothing from administration, nothing shady like that. All right. Um, so, but I always felt like my grades were, I would, I always felt like my grades were, um, I always felt like I could stand behind my grades. Right. And I always felt like my grades were justified and I always felt like my grades were like, and fair, like it was, it was not like students should be blindsided by their grade. I always, I always thought that was like unfair. I always thought students should know exactly where they kind of stand and, you know, with my class. Um, and I always felt like I should provide multiple opportunities for students to be successful in my class. Right. So if a student wasn't successful, um, or they didn't get the grade that they wanted, you know, it was pretty clearly laid out why they did not achieve that. Um, and I'm, and I'm not going to say I was like, I was perfect. Of course there was times where I don't feel a student deserved the exact grade that they got, or, you know, there's way I could have got better, but I feel like as time went on, um, for majority of students, that was the case and the better and better that, you know, became like, and I, and I would, I was more than willing to stand behind my grade, um, my grading policy, um, and how the grade was delivered. Right. And so, so yeah, I mean, that was, de that definitely helped me when I had those conversations and students would have trouble with their grade or parents or, you know, administrator, but I was, I always felt, I was, I always felt it was like important to give students multiple opportunities to improve. Right. And, you know, so you know, did I offer test revisions? Um, yeah, like I didn't give them like full credit back. Um, but I did provide students opportunities to, you know, do test revisions to earn credit back. Um, I did allow them to drop quiz grades when they like to perform poorly on a quiz. Um, they, you know, there was, uh, extra credit opportunity where they're able to earn points for on that. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for students to improve their grade. And it was very, very, the very, very few, examples of when students went above and beyond, did everything I asked them to do and still were not achieving the grade that they wanted. That was a very, 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 very few examples of that happened. Uh, let me just turn that off. Okay. And I mean, I'm not retired. I stepped away and I just do YouTube videos now. Uh, I was so nervous for grade 11 pre out because grade 11 applied. I did so bad. But so far, pre-calc has been decent at two tests and awesome. We'll keep it up. That's so good to hear. All right. So let's go through these two questions I have here. Uh, first one is the horizontal asymptote y equals one. And the y-intercept is at a negative three, two. Okay. So there's a couple things that we need to know. Horizontal asymptote is when y is equal to one. So remember when y is equal to one, that just means the coefficients are going to be exactly the same, right? So, you know, the... Um, Let's see here, the horizontal asymptote, right? So like if I had an equation like this, like 2x over a 2x like minus 1 or like something like that, since they both have coefficient of 2 over 2, like that'd be 1, right? Or y equals a, you know, x plus 5 over an x minus 1. Like that's also an example, right? Because the coefficients are both 1 over 1, right? So remember, whenever the powers are the same, right? 1 and 1, or it could be x squared and, you know, both squared, doesn't matter, both cubed, whenever they're exactly the same, the coefficients of those, the coefficients of those monomials, whenever they're exactly the same, um, that's going to make a horizontal asymptote of 1. So what we know is the coefficient, so what we need to know is we need to have the leading coefficient needs to be, so the leading coefficient um, is, needs to, uh, needs to be the same. Sorry, let me write that in there. Okay, so it needs to be the same. And that is going to be for the numerator and the denominator, all right? Now, the next one says the y-intercept is a negative three-halves. Now, that's kind of interesting. So what do we know about the y-intercept? So what we know about the y-intercept is x is equal to a zero, okay? So in the y-intercept, x is equal to zero. So what we need here is we need to have an equation where, and again, there's multiple different equations for here, right? So we need to have an equation where when we plug in zero, we're, what we're going to be left with is a negative three over two. And I can see your answer like that works, 
right? So yeah, that works like an X minus three all over a X plus two, right? The coefficients are the same, one and one, right? Powers. And also when you plug zero in for X, right? You're gonna get a negative three over two. So that works, right? And yeah, you could also do something like this, two X minus three and you know, two X um, plus two, like that works as well. Guess what also works? You could also do like a X squared minus three all over a X squared plus a two, right? That's gonna work as well. So you have multiple different opportunities in this example to be able to provide that. And Bilan, um, not taken. If you have any like math questions, just feel free to put them in on a, um, if you guys have any math questions, go to brianmcclogan.com forward slash Q&A. That's the best place to put those. All right, the next question is find the limit and then go ahead and check for does not exist. So in this example, what we need to do is do what we call an algebra, uh, algebra manipulation. So whenever you see something cubed, right? And you have two terms, what, um, what I like to do is think about the difference of the sum or difference of two cubes. And they have that exactly here on your final answer, right? So you can see it's right there. So in this case, if we know that x cubed plus a, sorry, a cubed, right, is equal to a x plus a times a x squared minus a ax or an xa, doesn't really matter. I'll just do an xa um, plus a a squared, okay? That is the factored form. Now what we have is a x cubed plus 125. Okay, so we have x cubed and x cubed, right? So now we can say as well, let's make a cubed equal to 125. Well, let's figure out what a is, right? A is going to equal what number multiplied by itself three times is gonna give you 125. Well, a is gonna equal five. You can also take the cube root of both sides. All right, now the reason why that's important is because now if a is equal to five, I can just plug it into this equation, right? So I can say x plus five times x squared minus x times a, right? So a times x, so that's gonna be a five x or you know x times five, whatever, let's just do a five x, and then plus 25, okay? So now let's go and write the limit. Let's go and back, rewrite the original limit. So I have the limit as x approaches a negative five all over a x plus five divided by a x plus five times a x squared minus a five x plus a 25, okay? So now what I want you to see here is these x plus fives are now going to go ahead and divide out, right? And that's important because we can't apply direct substitution here because when you take a negative five, plug it in, that's going to make the denominator equal to zero. So now I can simplify this to the limit as x approaches a negative five of one over a x squared minus a five x plus 25, right? So now let's go ahead and distribute this and see what we get. So I have a negative five quantity squared minus a five times negative five plus 25, okay? So let's go ahead and simplify this. So I have a one over negative 25 squared. So negative five times 25 is going to be a 25. Negative five times a negative five is going to be another 25. Ah, that's gonna be 25 and then plus 25. So 25 plus 25, 50 plus 25 is going to be a 75. So therefore I have a one over a 75. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you go ahead and evaluate that limit. And let me go and see. Any more questions? I think I got all. all. Yeah, I'm not going to do that word problem. Don't send me word problems, please. That makes, it makes my life so much longer. Um, I'll have to go back and look at um, the Instagram problem. I'll have to go back and read through all of those for you guys on that. And then also for those of you that maybe are just jumping onto the live stream, you're like, hey, what was uh, what was the three, you know, what was the lie? What was the question? So let's go ahead and pull them back up if I can. If I remember, where are, there you go. All right, so just a recap for those of you that joined in. Uh, I gave you guys three truths and a lie. And we had my mom, ooh, my mom was a math teacher. I failed a math class before. I have a minor in political science and I drive a 2007 Toyota Camry. And guess what? The only one that's actually a lie is I failed a math class because I did fail math class, uh, but that was physics. And I did fail many math tests, but I actually never failed a math class before. So that is my one lie. I hope you guys have a great week and I will look forward to seeing you guys next week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Cheers.